Today, we're gonna to take a look at website builders. Which one is right for you? Let's take a look at the top three, in my opinion, website builders that can get you started right now. These are gonna be the website builders that can best help you reach the level of design that I think designers are looking for. We're gonna be covering Webflow, Framer, and Wix Studio. Now, that is not the only thing that is out there. There's also, obviously, WordPress. There's gonna be Bubble. And there's gonna be Shopify and a bunch of other ones. This is gonna be a recap of some of the best tools that are available in terms of design functionality. Let's get started with the first one, which is gonna be Webflow. Now, to quickly dive into Webflow, I wanna show you a website that I personally built for my design academy. Now, this is something that allows you to have a complete control of your design. And this is something that's gonna be very common with all the tools that we're gonna cover. But one thing you'll notice is that there's a lot going on on this page, and that is gonna be something that is quite common with Webflow. There's a huge learning curve when it comes to learning and mastering Webflow. Now, I will say that once you master Webflow, like I believe I have, you can build practically any type of website, web app with a few connections, but you can pretty much get to any level that you want using Webflow as you can with the other ones. That's the only thing about this video is that there isn't a one right answer. So it is super, super personal on which tool you want to use. Now, to give you an example of what Webflow looks like, if you haven't seen any of my videos or if you've never seen this tool before, Webflow works within the same parameters as CSS and HTML as all other tool builders do. But you have a lot of control here with the padding, with the margin, you can kind of formulate it as much as you want. You have all these different breakpoints as you will with the other ones. And so you can really get down to the nitty gritty of the tool and make sure that everything is exactly how you want it to be. Now Webflow has these components that allow you to kind of copy paste directly super quickly into your project. So for example, if I drag this buy button in here, we'll see that that's just gonna expand into the container. So you can really pretty much do anything that you want inside of Webflow. Now this is a website that I built, hopefully you've seen the video already, but for Crocs, and the video is out on my channel where I rebuild this entire site, but you'll see that there is a level of functionality here and customization that is quite crazy. You can get very, very deep with this tool. Now I will say that Webflow is one of the more expensive options. Some of the CMS plans are really expensive. The localization plans are quite expensive, but it is a tool that if you master it can serve you forever and ever and ever. I mean, as long as the servers are live, obviously, but it's a tool that you can use to build your own business 100%. Then at number two, in no order at all, but at number two, we have Framer. And this is another site that I build for another video. Hopefully you also saw that one. But in this video or in this build, I try to rebuild the typeform.com website. So if you take a look at the actual site, you'll see that we have a video on the, on the left, text on the right. And so I tried to just get as close as I could with Framer. Now, all the things I talked about, about Webflow, about being super precise and having all the capabilities, you can still do that with Framer as you will be able to do it with Wix Studio. It's just about how you go about it that is interesting with these tools. So for example, inside of Webflow, we have these things called flex boxes, which allow you to have a super customizable website. In Framer, this is called a stack. It's pretty much the same exact thing. It allows you to change which direction you want your, your things to, to go. So for example, if I've got this stack vertically, I can change it to be horizontal. And now the text is gonna be on the left, left, left. Instead of vertical, if we have it there, we can change the distribution, start, center, end, align it however we want. And so you can see that there is is a lot of customizability as well. It's just about if you want this kind of free form available to you. If you're familiar with Figma, then this is gonna be an easier jump to start developing sites. For example, now I'm inside of Figma and you'll see that we have this design here that I've been building. You'll see that we're designing, not building, but you'll see that we work with the same kind of constraints, either a flex box or a stack, however you wanna call it. We have this way to kind of manipulate the design. I'm just gonna undo whatever I did there to not mess it up. But yeah, you'll see that we have a lot of customization inside of Figma, which is important to note because a lot of designers or most designers in the world are gonna be using something like Figma or Sketch most are probably not gonna be using Photoshop. So being able to go from these parameters into development is gonna be quite important. And so if we go into developer mode, we'll see that here we have 1.5 and that is gonna be REMs. Now we can switch that to be pixels if we don't want it to be REMs, but developing straight into Framer, we'll see that we also have, for example, we can change the gap here to be larger and it'll change it on all the different breakpoints as well, which is really cool. And then we got, we can change the bottom padding to make it a little bit larger. So you see that anything that we change in the larger breakpoint is gonna cascade down onto the smaller ones, which 
also happens inside of Webflow and also happens inside of Wix Studio. The one thing I will say is unique to Framer is that it has its own app. So Webflow and Wix Studio, to my knowledge, do not have an app. And if that's important to you, then Framer is a good option because all have CMS capabilities. If we see here, we got CMS. We can add a blog or we can import. They've all got plugins. This has just been announced actually, so it's quite new, but amazing. We've got different layouts here, text. We can insert videos, specific time date things. I've never actually used that one, but let's see. So we can go ahead and drag it in here and then we can preview. And now it says the time, which is gonna be 4.12 and that's exactly right. So I don't know, it's kind of cool. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of, of capability with Framer. We can build anything we want. We can start an agency with Framer if we want to. We can build small websites if we want to. It's not that complicated to learn. And so if you're, again, if you're coming from Figma to Framer, it might be an easier step up than going from Figma to Webflow, just because there's a lot more to learn and the layout might be a little bit more confusing comparing if we go just from Figma to Framer, we'll see that it is quite similar. If I get out of dev mode here, if you take a look at the auto layout section here, size layout i mean it's it's very very similar but anyways finally let's take a look at wix studio now i'm going to start from a template here because i want to showcase something so we'll see that when we start a new site with wix studio we can either go blank canvas or we can start from a template as you can with the other ones but i just want to take a look at what was it this one here so we can go to edit this template and that way we can actually take a look at the designer without it just being blank canvas. Okay, so now that we're inside of Wix Studio, this reminds me a little bit of both platforms. We have kind of the simplicity of Framer, but also the complexity of Webflow. The UI itself reminds me more of Framer. It's a little bit more friendly for users, but I feel like it's robust enough that you can build some pretty complex designs and go a little bit crazy with, with the layouts. And so don't let the actual UI fool you. There's a lot that you can do with this tool and it has a lot of built-in apps inside of the marketplace. So you can add social feeds, you can add reviews, you can add a lot of stuff that reminds me of WordPress, which is gonna be, I would say, one of the best parts about WordPress. It's kind of like blending a lot of the different tools together, which is fantastic. But again, if we go into the actual designer, which is what the video is about, we can change the stack to be vertical, horizontal, go back to vertical. And you'll see that they call it stack rather than a flex box. So that's why it reminds me more of Framer because they share that same kind of kind of wording, right? We can change this from blank to columns. So the parent here is now columns. We can add a cell to the right, to the left. We can add some background scroll effects. So on fade in, let's go ahead and preview that. Okay, so I mean, it's pretty crazy how quickly things work and how fast it is to just add in more animations and more interactions. Now that doesn't mean that they're gonna sell more. If you can add more interactions and animations and your client's gonna be able to sell more, that's not what that means. It's just, you have the capability to do that if you wanted to, right? Now, if I open up the layers, we'll see that we have these cells here just as you would inside a Webflow or Framer. You've got these kind of the layers so you can see everything that's in front of you. But then, for example, if I go into this repeater, I can change the background to be whatever I want. So for example, we'll go gray, don't know why, but gray it is. Or we can change the responsive behavior to be from fluid to fixed width to stretch. So it's a little bit more friendly for the user if they're not super familiar with CSS terms or even with HTML and CSS, right? We can add in borders, corners, shadows, a little bit of custom CSS if we want to, but we can see that the margin and padding and all that stuff is all the way down here. So it, in my opinion, it's not seen as a priority for you to go super, super custom. It's more about using the layers and the assets that they, that they kind of provide for you. Now, if you want to go ahead and add in some crazy stuff, you most definitely can, but there's a lot of pre-built stuff for you that works really well that you can add in from the get-go. It's super easy and fast to get started. And I mean, that just kind of works. So it all really depends about what you wanna be building. If you want something that has complete control that is a little bit more familiar from Figma, then you might wanna to go to Framer. But then again, it is 2024 and all three tools have an insane amount of capability. So it's not like one is better than the rest by a margin. At the end of the day, it's about what the user does with the tool. The tool is only as good as the person that's developing or designing. So. At the end of the day, it is depending on you. I recommend that you check out all three of them and let me know down below if I missed any tool like WordPress or Bubble or anything like that or Shopify as I'm sure that I probably did miss one or two, but that's okay. This video is about these three, which I am gonna be the most familiar with. So if you guys have any questions about these three tools, let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.